by the 2010s, Nokia was really on their downswing, but that didn't stop them for, from trying to uh, conquer every market slot available. Enter then the C301. This is supposed to be a stylish and uh, luxurious yet affordable entry-level phone. I know that doesn't really make sense. Probably I didn't explain it all that great, though it does have a quality feel about the, it, this thing. Uh, it has a metal back, uh, it has a minimalist design and, well, it's quite dashing at first sight. So let's switch to the table top view and see what this thing is all about. So this is the phone itself. Let's try to turn it on and see what we're really dealing with. And this stylish, handsome son of the gun that is the Nokia C301. Uh, bit of a sad, unfortunate uh, happenstance. I have tried turning it on again and really the touchscreen display doesn't work so hopefully I'm able to insert the pin and start this thing but the menu will not be as easily accessible as previously thought. That really takes me back. Though as probably all of you know by now I'm not a huge Nokia fan. I do still have fond memories of devices like this. But as mentioned before, in 2010, this thing was really on the downswing and Nokia's its parent company was struggling to get purchase on their core market and to counteract the smartphone invasion. Yeah, so as you can see, the touchscreen is unfortunately out of order, yet I don't know why, because I started this thing two days ago or something like that, and I was able to operate it. Nonetheless, at least the camera op operation works, the camera system works. This is a 5 megapixel shooter on the back, and, well, does it have any markings? Let's see, no, it's just a 5 megapixel ca classic camera hel helped by, aided by uh, an LED flash. I don't know if it's autofocus and I cannot really see because uh, I can't use the touch screen and test that function. So let's see, let me focus again on the main camera, not on the phone's camera, because this is not working. I'll try to take a peek and see what I get. Yeah, so pretty decent image for the time. Nothing spectacular, but I guess acceptable for the kind of people that uh, would use this phone. I'm pretty sure that w this was not meant to be used and, uh, by young people and they were not the target audience of this type of device. It was stylish enough to grab your attention, excellently built. Have a look at this strong chassis. It doesn't flex, it doesn't bend, it doesn't creak, it will not be um, damaged by usual wear and tear. So sadly other options in the menu will not work but that will not stop us from having a look under the hood at the physical aspect of this phone. So yeah here it is, here's the battery cover. This is all metal, it's not plastic and it's the best Mate best feeling material of the whole device. There's a BL-5CT battery, whatever that is. And here is the back of the battery. All the information on it. Pretty decent size at uh, 1050 milliamp hours. Here's the back of the phone. And let me just focus, there we are. Here is the SIM tray, quite straightforward. 
there's a slot for a micro SD card and well that's about it on the inside let me just remove the sim tray because this, this is just a test sim tray and put the battery back in its place like so one thing to note when you put the battery in it falls out right away if you don't secure it with the battery cover so just I don't know a thing to keep in mind if you don't have a battery cover for the one of these and you still want to buy it as a collection piece other things to note about the hardware uh, there's a wireless connection, oh boy, and Bluetooth 2.1 with st additional stereo FM radio and a 3mm, 3.5mm jack port. So this thing came, well, even if it was a basic entry level, mid, I guess upper entry level offering it still had some bells and whistles it wasn't extremely expensive last price registered on GSM Arena puts this thing at about 70 euros I guess that's a low estimation from um, from when the production was nearing its end but I guess Way back when it was launched, it was somewhere around 130 or 170 euros, somewhere in that area. By the, the time this thing was launched, Nokia, in, to my mind, were basing their products on, well, on their image of quality, but they were not competing in the upper echelon of the market. So I guess that makes sense. But anyway, this is the phone. Let's draw up some conclusions. So, is this thing worth collecting? Well, it's a stylish phone and way back when it was new, it still showed that Nokia knew how to make great quality products. Sadly, it was lagging behind its time, so technology had moved on by the time this thing was launched, and really, it didn't caps it didn't capture or, or encapsulate the fame, the magic, or the image of uh, all the old great Nokia's like the 6230i or previously the 6310i or maybe the 7110 and so on. So really, if you were to ask me, I'd say you could skip this one, but who knows? It wasn't sold by the bucket load, so maybe in 20 years time it will be a novel piece. I don't know if anybody plans to collect phones for that long, but anyway, that's my take on it. And as always, remember, I buy, hoard and collect and sometimes borrow quirky, obsolete tech stuff like this Nokia C3-01 so you don't have to. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.